Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're morphing objects in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based, and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, the first 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, giving you instant access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts. So you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Hello and welcome back to CG Shortcuts for yet another year. Hope everyone had a great holiday season. We've got some super exciting changes coming this year, starting with a brand new tutorial. So without any further ado, let's get started creating this morphing effect. And for this particular effect to work properly, we're going to need to start with some solid primitive objects, like a cube or cylinder for example. Just nothing with a hole in the middle, like the tube or the torus. So let's just keep it nice and simple and start with a cube. And the default cube is pretty massive, so we'll also need to scale this down. Let's try 15 centimeters. Don't forget the scale of your scene will affect your dynamics. Okay, let's zoom in a tad. And if we take a look at our render again, you can see that all of our shapes are morphing from an initial spherical shape to begin with. So we need to deform this cube and make it more spherical, and then we'll make it morph back into its original cube shape. And we actually have a deformer to do exactly that over here in the deformers menu, which has moved in the latest version of Cinema 4D. The one we're after is called the Spherify Deformer. So let's hold shift and click on that so it's automatically applied to our cube. And this deformer, which you can see in here now, allows us to crush whatever we apply it to into a ball or sphere shape. However, you can see we've already got this set to 50% strength, but it's not looking any rounder yet. And even if we crank this right up, nothing happens. And that's because if we hit N and B on the keyboard to show the lines of our geometry, we don't have any subdivision on our cube mesh. So there's not enough geometry there to deform. So if we grab our cube and subdivide the mesh down here by increasing the segments, you'll see that cube start to become more rounded until eventually it becomes a perfect sphere. It is important though not to subdivide this too much because the more dense our object is, the slower the dynamics is going to be calculated. One thing I also wanna check though, back in the deformer, is that we don't apply any scaling to this as well, which is also a feature in the Spherify Deformer. So let's set this to 10 so it keeps the volume of our original cube a bit better, like so. Okay, so that's our morphing cube sorted out. Let's do the same to a couple of other primitive objects. Let's try a platonic object as well. And I'll just shrink that down to about the same size as our cube, so 15 centimeters in the radius. Then we're going to spherify that as well. So let's hold control and duplicate that as a child of our platonic as well. Which will give us the same issue we had with our cube, where there's not enough geometry to deform this into a sphere. So we'll fix that the same way by adding segments to the platonic as well. And I think six subdivisions should do it. Okay, so that's the second object. Let's do one more and we'll move on to the next step. This time we'll use a pyramid. And exactly the same process again. We'll scale this down to the same dimensions and give that a copy of our deformer as well. Then just hop into the pyramid and increase those segments as well. All right, so now that we've got our three objects morphed into spheres, we can make some clones and apply some dynamics. So let's start by making these first two visible again, and we'll bring in a cloner object. Then we need to grab all of our objects and drag them into here. And now we've got some clones laid out in a bit of a grid, but I wanna tweak that and have them a bit closer to each other. So in the object tab of our cloner, let's scale our grid in a bit and in the Z axis as well. So we've got a little group of nine objects like so. And now, so we know which objects are which, let's just grab all of the deformers and decrease the spherify effect, which will show their original shape again. And we can now see how these are being distributed in our grid. 
and it's kind of boring having them all in rows like that. So let's see if we can have them appear more randomly in here. Let's grab our cloner again and down under clones, let's change this from iterate to random, which does exactly that and randomizes their distribution in the grid. But we can take this one step further and randomize each clone's rotation as well to make our grid look a bit more natural and less CG. So with our clone selected, we'll take a look at our effectors in here. And you probably guessed it, we'll grab a random effector, which is automatically applied to our cloner because we had it selected. And you can see our clones are now randomly positioned in our scene. But we only want this effector to affect the rotation. So let's go down to the parameter tab and turn off position and swap it for rotation. Then we'll randomize the rotation on all axes, 360 degrees. So our grid of objects looks a bit more hand placed. And now that those shapes are more randomly placed, we can grab the deformers again and just morph them back into spheres. Then to set these up for dynamics, I just want them to fall to the floor at first so I can make sure there's no intersecting. So we need to raise our cloner up so it's resting on the ground plane. And it's probably best to do that over in the side view. Let's just bring this up to roughly where the ground plane would be. So about there should be fine. Then we'll switch back to the perspective view. And as our ground plane, let's use a plane, which we can find in here. And we want our spheres to interact with this plane. So let's right click and add a simulation tag. And we'll need a collider body tag. Then I'll make some quick tweaks in the collision tab. I just want to reduce the bounce and the friction. So our spheres don't wander off too far when the simulation takes over. Then we need to tell the clones to be dynamic as well so they can interact with that plane. So we'll add a simulation tag to that as well. And this time it's going to be a rigid body. And now if we hit play, those spheres should settle dynamically into place on the floor. And I actually want our animation to start like this with all the objects resting in place. So if we head over to the dynamics tab, we can lock those positions in by clicking the set initial state button. And with that all set, we can now work on the morph transition and animate them from spheres back to their original shapes. So let's grab the three deformers again. And over in the fields tab, we can choose how we want our morphing to transition by using fields. And there's plenty of different fields to choose from, but as we want a simple linear transition, let's just stick to the linear field. And it looks like our field is also being cloned, which we don't want. And that's because it's placed here as a child of our cloner. So all we need to do is drag that out of the cloner hierarchy. And now we can use this to transition from sphere back to original shape. And we'll just scale this fall off down a bit first so the transition is a bit more abrupt. And you'll see now, if we zoom in a tad, we can now move this back and forth to transition between the different morph states. So all we need to do now is animate this. So let's start with our field back over here and we'll animate this from back here through our objects to create the morph effect. So with the linear field selected, we need to animate the position. So over in the coordinates tab, let's start our animation from around frame eight, where we'll set a keyframe on the X axis. Then if we go ahead a few seconds, let's animate this to here and set another keyframe. And now if we hit play, let's see what that gives us. A nice linear transition from sphere to original shape. And because we also added those simulation tags, those objects are also behaving dynamically and interacting with the floor and each other. And that's really all there is to this effect. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best and there's no way we could keep making all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. Okay, that's it for now. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.